So I don't know if you guys want to technically call this the regular like daily vlog stuff because I'm not actually walking around with the camera. I'm just, most of it's been me sitting here in front of this desk, probably wearing a shirt relatively similar to this one and doing some sort of talk with you guys rather than actually traveling around and doing something that is relatively engaging. But until the time being that I actually start doing that again, hopefully relatively soon, as in hopefully this weekend or next week, um, check out this video. I pole vaulted again. That was like a 14-ish bar or 14-ish bungee on a pretty short pull from five lefts. Um, so I was pretty happy about that. There's a piece of dust. Um, I also went on a run yesterday, first long run in a long time. Don't ask me about the pace. It was really, really slow, like really slow. Most, uh, I'm pretty sure all of you could have run it with me, but four miles uphill. It was actually like really, like if you knew where I lived, it was, it's really uphill. Today's video, um, you saw by the title, it's me talking about the decathlon. So the idea was like an instant thing. One of my followers on the old Instagram said, hey, is there any way I can ask you some questions about the decathlon? I said, hey, is there any way that you would allow me to put that into a video? He said, yes, of course, put that into a video. I'd be pumped if you put that in a video. So I put it in a video, hence this video. Um, so Adam underscore 144P sent me a bunch of questions asking like just random stuff about the decathlon or just like a kind of an interview. So thanks Adam for the interview. First, before we get into these questions, don't forget to hit the bell, subscribe and like this video if you do like it. Um, other than that, congratulations to the Marist track and field team of which I am a coach here in Eugene. We had our state meet this weekend. Oh, and sorry, I forgot to mention, shouts out to a couple of my friends that I met at the state track meet this weekend, Danny and Gabe. You guys are awesome. It was cool to talk to you. And hopefully I'll see you around either Hayward in the future or whatever. But best of luck in your guys' uh, high school careers. Keep grinding and keep working. Um, back to the video. There was some pretty fantastic some performances and some performances that we really weren't expecting as a coaching staff. They were just awesome. Our girls ended up taking fifth, one play one place out of a trophy, um, but scoring more points than they did last year, so that was great. And then our men ended up taking second, which, uh, I don't know, it wasn't expected, but it was a very, very nice surprise. So let's dive into these questions. So I'm gonna read the full questions, and you guys hopefully will relate to the questions or have a question that I'm answering that's relatively similar that you wanted to, anyways. Hopefully this all plans out, but he says, my first question and kind of the biggest one is about training. As a long sprinter, I have a lot of low rep, high intensity workouts that can sometimes be really grueling. I saw in your videos that one of the things you like most about the decathlon is the diversity of training. Can you expand on that? Like, do you still have the over distance speed work type workouts like four times 350, 500s, etc.? Are the workouts hard mentally more than physically, both or vice versa? And that's a pretty... Phenomenal question and I could probably do like a whole video just about it but In the short of it like I say that the diversity because I can go from like I can go from long jump to hurdles to pole vault to High jump to I literally have 10 events that I can train at any given time The mental side of things is just that you're out there for so long You're out there training for so long because you have so many events and then you have to do a workout and then you have to go lift so there's a lot of extra stuff that tacks on to those things so is it physical? Yes, it's very physical. You're out there for a long period of time on your feet doing workouts, actually moving for X amount of hours, upwards of like five if you include the lift. And then you have the mental side of things where now that you're done with this, you have to strap up your spikes or your racing flats or whatever and go do those workouts. And as for like the four times 350 and like the 500s and that stuff, yes, we do a ton of that stuff because you really do need that sprint endurance to be able to do the majority of the events because the majority of the events involve sprinting and then at the end of the day you either have a 400 or a 1500. So we do a lot of distance training to do the 1500 and then we do a lot of like over distance training or over interval training with like 500, 400, 300, 3350s, 3300s. Do you ever have weeks where you focus on just one event? No. Simple answer, no. I do majority of the events the majority of the week. How often do you compete as a decathlete? And if you're not doing the deck, what events do you do? So including heptathlons and decathlons, heptathlons, the goal is to do 
um, two during a college season. So you do one to qualify and then one at NCAAs. If you don't qualify at the first one, oftentimes you'll do conference and then you'll do um, NCAAs. And so it's kind of the same thing for outdoors, except for outdoors, I always do a decathlon at Pac 12s. So we do one decathlon to kind of like get into the swing of things. And oftentimes I qualify for nationals during that decathlon. And then I do the Pac 12 decathlon where we're just going off of places where I really just want to score as high as I can and score as many points for the team. And then you have the NCAA meet where it's kind of just all out there. And then if you qualify for USAs, you do USAs. And then if you qualify for a team, then you do whatever team you're on, whether that be Thorpe Cup, World Teams, that kind of thing. So you can do a lot of decathlons in a year, oddly enough. I'm not recommending you do a ton of them because they're pretty taxing. It's like a marathon runner is not going to go out and do a ton of marathons a week or a like year because it's really taxing on your body. Um, and it's kind of the same way with the decathlon. Marathon is considerably harder than decathlon, but that's that. Oh, and then for events that we would usually do when we're not doing a decathlon, always hurdles, always pole vault, and then either like a throw or just another event that we feel like we need some help on, like discus or something like that, just to get some competition. What's the recovery path like after a deck? So um, after a decathlon, the next morning I'll go for like a shorter run. It's more like a shakeout. It'll be like two miles uh, out and back. Because um, if you're just really lazy the next day, you're going to feel like crap the rest of the week and you're not going to have like a good training cycle. So I'll do that, hard, like not hard. I'll do that workout, like jog two miles um, the morning after. And then it's kind of like a stretch recovery the rest of the week. And then the next day, like so three days after, four days after the decathlon, then you can start hitting it a little bit harder, um, get back into like the more technical side of things, but we probably won't have a hard workout until like a week after or a week and a half after the decathlon. Um, oftentimes we have another meet after the decathlon, so we'll do a hard workout and then use the meet as almost like a practice. This is a question I really like. Is the deck hard mentally throughout the entire two days or do you find or do you kind of get through the first few events and then settle into your zone and so i think the hardest part on the first day mentally is before the 100 and after the or right before the 400 so you are really really nervous or kind of nervous before the 100 and then as soon as the gun goes off it's just your race and you're done and then the rest of the events are pretty fun that day the hardest part on the second day is going to be actually waking up and doing your shakeout that you need to do and getting as enough food that you need to do for the next day. And then all the events on the second day are pretty fun outside of the 1500 for me. And so my most nerve wracking moment is going to be right before the 15 when I know exactly what I need to run. And then the gun goes off and it's literally only up to my mental toughness to be able to fight through the 1500. It's not going to be up to my legs because I know my legs are already going to be tired. And so it's just a matter of, can I control my legs with my mind to tell them, hey, this is your last event. You just got to lay it all out there and see what actually comes up in the end, whether you're going to be successful, whether you're going to be the hero or the goat, as my dad would say, um, which now in like the goat means the greatest of all. Anyways, it's an old phrase, hero or the goat, meaning like the goat wasn't a good person. Anyways, um... The decathlon is a different event, and if you guys ever want to try one, I recommend you do. They're a ton of fun, um, and I love that there's like a backing behind the multis events community. Um, it's pretty cool. That's going to be kind of the end of today's video. I know you guys probably wanted a little bit more of me to dive more into the decathlon, and that's something that we can do later. I want you guys to ask questions. Um, the cool thing is, Devin's coming for Prefontaine this week, and... Maybe with your guys' help, or if he sees this video, and I'm probably just going to call him, but maybe with your guys' help, or if he sees this video, we can get him for a live Q&A. So I'll pull up my Instagram, you guys can ask questions, I'll record it like this, and then I'll upload it to YouTube. So you guys could ask live questions with Devin Allen, and kind of hear the responses through the Instagram, we'll have it set up so that you guys can see that, and then I'll actually post the video to YouTube. So... Hopefully you guys will enjoy that, and it'll be right before the Prefontaine, so one of his bigger meets. He gets in on Thursday, so we'll try and figure out how we're going to set that up, and he'll be a little bit after. So maybe you guys could after, maybe we'll set it up so you guys can ask questions after Prefontaine. Uh, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. I get to go pole vault some more, so I'll try and record some footage of that. Um, 
It should be a good time. Oh, I've been climbing a lot lately. lately. Check out these two videos. The front flip's a lot harder than the like running up the wall kind of thing. The running up the wall kind of thing is just, it's a really, really hard problem and I just cheated it with my athleticism. Um, and it technically doesn't count as completing the problem. But anyways, uh, that's what I've been up to. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. It's another beautiful day here in the Emerald Valley. Can't believe I forgot to do an outro. Remember, be nice to people, don't hurt yourself, don't hurt others, slow down, don't dance so fast, and I will talk to you guys all relatively soon. Okay, bye. Thank you.